world, you know. Uh, most people, most people don't see sobriety as like something that they uh, are want to participate in, or like think that it's really within the realms of you know, normal life. But in reality, the, uh, most people that I've met about that drink or things like that just do it merely for sort of social pressures or to you know fit in or whatever. So in that sense. It's strange, it's obviously just in the sense of, you know, sort of fighting against that and being yourself and not feeling like you need to sort of cave into mm. those around you. And like a general term without trying to sound too pedantic. So is straight edge the deliberate action to not indulge in these things? Or is it just like the absence of these things? Do you know what I mean? So are you actually going out your way to not take these things? Or is it because you already don't take these things, then you'd label it? Um, well, there's, there's people that like don't take it, they don't label themselves as that. I think it's the the mindset and stuff that comes with it, and the sort of the actions of, and reasons behind what you're doing it for. You know, because there's plenty of people that we know that we would classify, you know, as like you know, like vegan straight edge or straight edge or you know, positive mental attitude. All these things that like people that you probably know as well that you could you know put under labels, mm. but. It just depends on yourself what what's the reason that you want to put the label for. Or straight edge just being sort of part of a community, I would say, and like, you know, involved around music and like movements and things like that to try and push against normality. Mm. So for you know yourself, that. like what's what's your direct reason for going straight edge and being straight edge? Um, I would say my one would um the, the friends I had um, sort of within the music, like hardcore and punk music scene um, back, I don't know, when when sort of was the year that we would have met McKenzie? In 20, what was it, 2015 odd? 2015, yeah. So, I mean, like early 2015? Yeah, so I met McKenzie and Jack sort of all roughly in, or sort of the same time. I can't remember, Jack, could you claim by that point, or did you claim later on? I claimed after you, you've been edge longer than me at this point. Ah, I forget, to be honest. Um, so it was just, um, Mackenzie was, by that time, that I knew he was when I met him. And so that was like, so I get to know him again, to understand why he needed that. And then there was another friend that we had, who we're still friends with, but just don't speak to as much, um, called Sean, who was edge as well. And that was just, so I get to know them, um, the sort of was in tandem with getting to know their, you know, like beliefs and things like that. So I think it was very much like it wasn't like pushing, like joining into a big like cult or anything like that. It was just more so getting to know like minded people that I enjoyed hanging out with, and then seeing that they had this thing in common that actually, when I thought about it, I kind of agreed with. You know, the fact of um, oh, like I don't drink in this and that because like. Um, for for whatever reason, you know, some people that were like, "Oh, I don't have," you know, some people that didn't have it because of maybe some sort of trauma or like family experience that like woke them up to it, mm, right. or some of them just wanted to be that example for other people. Um, but it's sort of like obviously it changes over time, you know. Like as Jack said, he claimed after me, and then Mackenzie no longer claims. So it's sort of a thing that. It sort of moves and flows with how you sort of grow up, with how you, I guess, change and see the world. Jack, what was your reason for going straight edge? Um, so there's a kind of couple of reasons. The first one was I just woke up after a night out, funnily enough, and I just felt totally crap. Um, I spent quite a lot of money and. I was just like, I don't really want to do this anymore. And to kind of further reinforce that, there's been some kind of family issues behind like alcohol abuse. Um, mm-hmm. And that just kind of made me think to myself, well, why am I like damaging myself this way? Why am I kind of basically poisoning myself? Um, and I, again, having friends like Andrew and uh, Sean to kind of help me with it, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And I didn't actually kind of claim until maybe like three months down the line where I kind of could say to myself, I don't need this anymore. 
and I don't think I'll ever need it again. Because right. I don't really see myself ever, like, drinking all that again, because, like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, did I really enjoy it? And I can still go out and, like, nights out to clubs and stuff like that, and I don't feel like, I don't feel as pressured. I think I probably have more fun the fact that I still remember mm-hmm. the nights out. Yeah, I agree. Do you ever feel um, like an outsider because of it? Um, at first I did, but now because like I've done it for so long, um, I've got no problem with people like saying to me, "Oh, do you want a drink?" And I'll just be like, right, "Okay, I'll just get a coke or whatever." And they're like, they kind of like look at you like, "Oh, but you're in a club. Why are you not having a drink?" And I'm just mm-hmm. like, "Well, I just don't drink. I don't like a lot of people outside kind of." punk and alternative scene don't really know the term straight edge as such so I'll just say oh I'm sober I just don't drink right And but again outside that kind of realm people kind of look at you like oh you're not really that normal or <laughs> you're kind of you're kind of boring or yeah, whatever yeah. which is to- totally not the case yeah because with sober it makes it sound as though you've had like like you're a recovering habit you yeah. know what I mean so it's like have. yeah exactly because it's like with a lot of Scottish people um, with that older generation, they sort of like uh, in their time it was like teetotal, so mm. it, it just fit, it just sounds kind of weird. So yeah, as Jack said, it's like oh, you're either straight edge, you know, or you're like oh, you don't get that, and I'm, I'm sober. And then they're like oh, right, okay, uh, yeah, they give you that sort of look as though it's like, oh, are you like right and like hardline Christian, or have you just like came out of like a fucking you know a clinic. Mm. So do you ever feel sort of like an outsider because of that? Um, like this, uh, the same way as Jack said, like, I don't, it was that way when I first started the war. It was just that way I was like, oh, well, I'll try it out and see what it suits for me. And I was like, I'll still go out with my friends and stuff because at the time I was in the environments where I would probably be most doing, like having most uh, engagement with that. Right. At that time I was in university. I was also doing the military part time. So like doing both of them in those environments that like quite have a, a high drinking culture. I was like, well, if I'm able to get by on this one, then I'm, I'm I uh, obviously understand this for me. And then I was able to still go out and have a good time and still be the sort of same person, still have fun and not be that you know awkward person in the corner that's just getting pissed off at people. Mm, right. um, so, no, for me personally, I can really say it's, it's caused an outcast, to be honest. Mackenzie, when you stopped, uh, when, when you stopped being straight edge, how did people react that were straight edge? It's kind of divided. I knew a lot of people that it was kind of split like three ways actually. I had a lot of friends who were I had like a lot of friend groups. So I had my my, my hardcore kind of scene, and a lot of them were just thinking like some of them were like, "Yeah, you do you, fair enough." Because it's not like anything that's going to evolve in. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. So they were like, "Fair enough, do what you want to do." Then I had a bunch of like people who who some of them I just didn't I didn't even become that friendly with who genuinely made it out to be a big deal mm. and were like bothered because I'd been straight edge for so long and it's like this has nothing to do with you so why are you so bothered about it if it doesn't bother me it shouldn't bother you so yeah, fuck yeah. off <laughs> <laughs> um, I, had a, I had a group of friends I had a bunch of group of friends I went skating with and like I, I had a friend who was just a, a fucking borderline like substance abuser essentially he was just a junkie mm. who even at that time he, he just thought it was like you do you. It's like up to you. Then I had a whole bunch of other friends who were like thought it was amazing because we could finally go out and go to bars and shit. Mm. So it was very divided. But again, it's it's my decision. I do what I want to do. It's not no one else should be fucking bothered about it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, have you ever like when you were straight edge? And this is to apply to everyone here. Have you ever sort of like encouraged that on someone? I did. Not really, actually, because when I was, I mean, I've, I didn't drink first, I didn't have my first drink of alcohol until I was like 19. Right. So I was just basically that way where I had never been influenced when I was younger to do it, like oh, everyone else I grew up with was drinking and 
taking drugs and going to parties and shit. And they would always push it on me, but it was never that way where I'd push it on them. Because, right. again, like I said, it's just my choice. And mm. I, just, I value that everyone has their own opinion and they can do what they want. So I don't really care. And again, it's, it's your own choice. But there was some times where, for instance, like my friend who I said is like a junkie, I would say to him, like, you need to watch what you're doing. I would never say you should go straight edge. Right. But I would always make sure, like, you need to take take care of yourself yeah. a lot more than what you're doing because you could you could just die. You never know. Like <laughs> you're straight up going to kill yourself. Put yourself in an early grave. So there would be sometimes I would mention it and use it as an example, mm. but it was never that way of like putting myself high up and being like, "Oh, well, look at me. I'm this and I'm that, and I'm straight edge. Right. I'm clean. I'm sober. You should take that as an example and do yourself better." I just I just feel everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack, like, Andrew, uh, have you ever? Oh. oh, sorry, go for it. Yeah. No, I was just saying. I think it's like as Mackenzie was saying. I think it's important to like, um, like in, explain the difference of like it's it's like your choice and your personal opinion. But I think there's a, a thin line between like you know letting people know and like helping people around you and like preaching to people that, mm. that don't want to hear it. Mm. You know, because it's like I think as well as a difference between people not drinking and uh, partaking in substance abuse and being straight edge because it all sort of comes with a, a mindset basically so and, and like you're, you're never gonna sort of get through to someone like that where it's being like oh well maybe you should be straight edge because that that then it doesn't become about the lifestyle it is then about this this tag that's like tagline on your lifestyle you know what I mean? Right. Where people are like, oh, all oh, right, I'll go straight edge. And you're like, well, what's behind that? It's about actually helping bury yourself. Right. So, um, and I think it's a lot of people as well think it's there's maybe some kind of like, uh, I don't know, like uppity uh, mentality with it. Yeah. But for me personally, it's, there's like, there's no, um, like disregard or, or shame for people that like are substance abusers or like are, are struggling with addiction. I think there's some of the people that need the most help in the society. Mm. But it's more so that the societal norms that push that on people, like that, that make it that that makes it that that's their only thing to turn to. And like big tobacco and big alcohol industries that, you know, like I spoke about this before, but make it as though like you know, if you have a couple of beers and you get to drink and, like, you'll be able to loosen up and speak to that girl that you always wanted to speak mm. to and, like, all the rest of it, you know, like, the, the perfect teen movie stuff, you know, yeah. so I think it's it's just important to have it where, uh, if it is something that people are doing, that they're never really preaching it on people and it's like, if someone is talking to you about it or is, is interested, like, the, the way that I was always with with Mackenzie or Sean, I would be the one asking, or it would come up in conversation. I don't remember a single time where Mackenzie was like, "Well, no, you should do it. Like, definitely do it." Mm. You know, because if you don't have the mindset there, then it's not going to be something you're going to stick with. Right. You can't force yeah. it upon anyone. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, do you feel like this applies to any use? But does it, do you feel like mm. you've uh, majorly benefited yourself from being straight edge? No, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. I feel like I'm not nowhere, I'd be nowhere near as mature and open minded if I didn't know what straight edge was when I was growing up. Right. Because mm-hmm. it just gave me the values of having your own opinion and learning to appreciate everyone else's opinion. And that mindset of, I'll do what I want to do, you do what you want to do. Like, mm-hmm. basically, not in a bad way, it's like mind your own business. Right. But it's true. Like, you do what you want to do. I'm not going to judge others for what they want to do. Like, you do you, I'll do me. Why can we not get along? Just be happy that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like going against the grain and giving your own ideals and ideologies to help work, like, mm-hmm. at a young age especially. I think I agree with that. Yeah. So for all three of you, as your straight edge, is it just sort of, like, no no drinking, no drugs? The thing about straight edge is, like, a lot of people, when you see the tag, is, like, three X's. Yeah, and that's meant to be like for the three rules, which is like don't drink, uh, don't smoke, and don't fuck, which yeah. is meant to be like no pr- promiscuous sex. And a lot of people kind of forget about that one. 
Yeah, because yeah, the big the big thing for everyone is like, don't drink and don't smoke. Um, but the way it kind of goes is, I don't think anyone would say you're not really straight edge if you're just. It's not something I can I like agree with or anything like. I was like shagging about, but like I'm not gonna say to somebody like you're not straight edge because you do that. Because if you're like if you're not if you're not like taking addictive substances into your body, like obviously medicines and stuff are are, like a wee bit different if you need something like that. Mm. But if like if you're taking like a a mind altering substance, shall we say, Mm. so like alcohol or like weed or anything like that. Then obviously that's not straight edge, but the third X kind of gets thrown away. But yeah, and um, everyone kind of takes their own kind of rules on it. Like yeah, I've seen like so many different people say different stuff is straight edge, and other people like um the guy who came up with it, Ian McKay, um from a band called Minor Threat. Um, he kind of came up with the whole straight edge thing in the first place, and the story that always gets me that kind of got me thinking about straight edge in the first place was him sitting having a coffee and some fan of it, like minor threat coming up and speaking to him and then be like oh I thought you were straight edge and this is like the guy who came up with it and he's mm. like well I am and the guy's like oh well, my friend said that caffeine's not straight edge and then <laughs> Ian McKay just going like, alright go tell your friend to go fuck himself <laughs> <laughs> it's like so everyone's got their own kind of depictions of it, right? Uh, with the kind of the kind of drug scenes and stuff like that. So, so as long as uh, you're not like sort of directly hurting yourself or like addicted to something, that's effectively yeah. the core of straight edge. I think it's like not taking anything that can alter your vision of the world, really. So like, would coffee not do that? I've not ever taken so much caffeine, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like the, the, the taglines that get thrown around with straight edge is like a uh, clear mind, open spirit and things like right. that, yeah. where it gets really sort of into the, the, the spiritual side of it, yeah. but it's it's like the same as like, uh, this is sort of, I'm not like comparing it to religion, but if you think of like Christianity, there's the, there's the main light of Christianity, but there's many different sects of like interpreting, yeah, interpreting yeah, right. that, you know, that gospel where there's like, you know, sort of hardline Christianity, there's new faith Christianity, mm. and the same with, you know, just religion in general, you know, it all comes from sort of one idea and different interpretations of it, so like, as Jack said, that originated from this one person, but then there's different people that diff- do different takes on it, yeah. because it's just the, it's just the sort of, the cloud thinking of, oh, it's like betterment of yourself, and mm-hmm. I would say, uh, I would say probably one of the, the main tenets is, is a clear mind, like being able to focus and focus on yourself, so it's like, there are, there are people that will be like, oh, well, um, like, for example, like, in America, where there's quite a lot of um, was quite big sex with strips. They're also quite into gambling. But there'll be people that'll be like, oh, well, that's not strange because you, you don't have a clear mind on that. You're sort right. of, you have an that's sort of obsession with money. Or, you know, like, you're, you're putting yourself in an environment where you're only going to be one to win, win, win. But mm. if that's what someone does for enjoyment and they're able to st- actually keep a clear mind, then it comes down to them. There's no, as Jack said, there's no, like, oh, well, you haven't done X, Y, Z, so therefore you have the, the title of straight edge struck from your Instagram. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, is there sort of like an elitist system there? So like people that follow like the traditional three Xs kind of see themselves as better than people that don't? Um, uh, I'd probably, I'd, yeah. There's, <laughs> defi- there's, defi- there's, defi- there's definitely some people who come under the straight edge banner that see themselves as better than others and will be pushy about it and stuff like that but I think that comes with like any kind of yeah, brand yeah. that you put yourself under so exactly. it's, it's no different from any other kind of yeah. lifestyle choices where yeah. people are going to try and push it on other people religions and stuff included yeah you see it massively with vegans you know what I mean where it's like yeah. uh, an example that always stuck out to me with veganism was there was a girl that um, was on Twitter and it kind of went viral where she was saying oh there's a a girl that lives down the, like a little girl that lives down the road from me and she's um, 
so sort of borderline homeless. She doesn't have any money to spend for herself, basically. And every time the ice cream van came, when she was playing with my friend, she was left at the back. So she was like, oh, well, I went out and bought an ice cream today and I feel really good. And then it was like the first reply was just like, you bought her a dairy ice cream, like some vegan you are. And you're just like, what? <laughs> like, that person's like, I've got the one up that day. Mm-hmm. You know? And it is, it is that way. But it's like, it's not... It's the same as everything. It's not like a popularity contest. It's not like a point scoring system. It's what's good for you. Yeah. Yes. I'd say, I'd say like, um, the only time it would be where I could imagine like any of us where it's like sort of being like, well, that's not really straight edge is if it's someone claiming it when they're still sort of abusing. You know, when someone's like claiming it and not actually following any of the, the lifestyle choices because yeah. Yeah. all that is is just you know, doing it for the wrong reasons and putting a bad name on it, you know, because it's like yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we know some people where they've been like, oh, well, I don't drink, but I still smoke and things like that. And it's like, well, you're not really <laughs> applying yourself to it, are you? What's the point really you doing it? I'm yeah. basically straight edge, but yeah, you're huffing 45s a day. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then those are the same people that will claim edge and then they put like the two X's in their bio rather than the three. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> curve <laughs> choice. You can't choose to have two rather than three. You have <laughs> curve, curve, curve. three. Fucking idiot. <laughs> Curved edges, bro. <laughs> Why would someone claim uh, to be straight edge? Is it just to sort of like fit in with the crowd and the culture? Probably for an image, yeah. Right. So you're saying why would someone claim when they're not actually yeah when they're not actually sort of pursuing it yeah it depends like obviously in sort of uh, without being condescending sort of like normal walks of life no one's really going to be going out and being like oh I'm straight edge unless it's something that they've read up on and they're like oh it's really cool and I'll, I'll apply it myself but and like the circles where I originated from like punk and hardcore music and stuff it is like 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 anything else, like it's like a sort of a, a tag to yourself, like a tagline. Right. So the, there will be some people that, you know, usually younger people, it's not exactly like it's a big thing, like the same way as, you know, the, there's not really that many people who pretend to be a vegan because at the end of the day, it's only, it's only really coming down to yourself. Mm. I can understand, like, veganism is sort of for the benefit of the world and everything around you. So you might pretend to the extent that you provide, but you don't really get anything out of being straight edge. Right. So, I, as, as Max said, it's probably just for the, the image of people around them, but in my experience, I've not really encountered many people that yeah. claim it to be, which is why it's a bit abnormal where you're like, oh, okay, I don't really know what you're getting out of it. Why yeah, is... Um, no from it. That's the thing, there's no gain from, yeah. getting, from telling people that you're straight edge when you're not, because... Like, we've already went over, it's not like many people look at it as, like, an elitist culture. So if you were to go about saying it, think people are going to look up to you, it's just that way where if you tell somebody you're straight edge, in that kind of scene, people just be like, oh, good for you. It's not, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's not really good for you, though, because you're not actually straight edge. So what, what financial gain are you getting out from that? Nothing. Just go and say to all your normie pals that they think you're some kind of cool, edgy person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do, you think, um, why do you think straight edge is so he- heavily associated with like a type of music or a genre of music? Um, that, that's, as Jack said, that's sort of like where it originated from. Like obviously, yeah. like, not saying like sobriety or anything like that entered from like Washington DC punk in the 70s. But um, the, the correlations between like because that's that's what we're sort of saying. All of those sort of underground lifestyle choices, like positive mental attitude, straight edge, like vegan straight edge, they all originated from that sort of those grassroots communities in Washington, um, and then spread around the world. Where you know it was small groups of like-minded individuals, um, sort of coming together, making music creatively. And then also discussing their sort of ideas and philosophies. Mm. So you've got people that have creative outlets like that that are, you know, are vegan or PMA, like Chromags and things like that, that still sort of spread that message. But um, yeah, it's just that, that sort of putting sobriety under the tag of sort of did come from that sort of music because it was like a, a push against the grain, especially at that time when it was yeah. like 
um, you know, New York City riots and like massive opioid crises and things like that. Right. Um, it was like a, a natural rebellion against what was going on around them, um, which um, got the sort of got the sort of traction at first that it was closed minded, like they were sort of like vegan kids, where. Um, you know, because it, it sounds like quite, you know, like older, like, oh, don't do, you know, don't drink and do drugs, you know, but it was actually like the sort of mentality of, from a younger person saying, you know, we're better than that and it shouldn't be for us to be basically self destructive and killing each other over something so poisonous, basically. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> how long have you and Jack been straight edge? And Mackenzie, how long had you been straight edge? And Jack, I went, you can go. Oh, uh, yeah, let me go first. Sorry, I I didn't I didn't hear anyone talk, so I was just going to jump in. Sorry, it's all right. <laughs> um, I didn't. I think I don't even know like when I claimed because I I've never smoked in my life and I didn't drink until I was nineteen. So it was just that way where I always grew up with punk because my dad grew me up on like UK punk, and then from there just like finally YouTube suggestions always finding US punk bands right. so I grew up with like The Damned and I grew up with like Sex Pistols and no not Sex Pistols I hate Sex Pistols and like, stuff <laughs> like that so like I grew always grew up around punk and I grew up like skate punk and like like Lance Mountain and skate to like Stiff Little Fingers and Lance Mountain and skate and The Damned and shit I always found skaters through that so I think it, it must have just been like it must have been like 13 or 14 or so. I was just thinking, like, I want to be like that. I want to just skate all the time. I want to have a clear mind. So I don't know what year or how old I was when I claimed, but I just know I was... I, I'm not trying to be that guy. I was like, I was edge from the womb, because that's just... Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially what it was. I, I was basically just edge until, like... Like, that point where I actually, like, woke up and, like, clicked. And then up until, like, when I was 19, going on 20, that was when I... Broke edge, so I, I couldn't give you a specific date. But from um, basically, basically from the womb. That's what. So we'll see, nine, we'll see. We'll see. Nineteen then. <laughs> and what um, about you both? So Sorry. I'll be three years come June. Right. And I'm. Um, I You'd be like a year longer than me. Yeah, I'm fourth on October. It's my four year on October. Right. Have you ever October. have you ever broken edge while trying to pursue it? No. Uh, no. I don't think like if you like broken while claiming it, they either have to stop claiming it or reset the counter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we know people that have claimed and then broke and then basically they've said but obviously it's as we said before, it's with anything where there's People they'll be like, oh, you have one chance, and if you break it, then that's you're never allowed to be part of the club again. Yeah. But mm. that's not what it's about. It's about your your own betterment. So, like, there are people that will just you know for whatever reason, if that pressure does, because the whole point is you're fighting against this pressure that's meant to be around you twenty four seven. Like, I think it's natural to think that some people will change their minds, or yeah. some people will make like a snap decision. Um, so we've got people that you know if you ask them how long they've been sober they may be like oh well sort of six years overall but only straight edge for four you know because you know they might have taken a break or they might have just made like a stupid decision and really said um, but no I, I, like as I said before I don't think me personally I don't think there's any point in, in claiming until you're you're sure yourself so like as Jack said he was technically straight edge or like with the ideologies of straight edge for a while you know three four months before he actually you know said to people oh yeah you know that that's uh, i'm straight edge by the way you know or like was sort of open about those ideology right i thought i was allowed to put it in my insta bio <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> Joe is like beating his broken edge at six times. Oh, less. <laughs> I was trying to avoid this part. Of the, uh, getting a tattoo a week after it. Can't help it. I genuinely can't help it. <laughs> it's just, it's like a reaction anytime straight edge comes up. <laughs> Our friend Zach passed down 
an ex watch. He passed on an ex watch to me because he knew that he could never do it. So he gave that watch to me. <laughs> and when I broke edge, I passed it down to one of my other friends. So that is a beautiful community right there. <laughs> Those watches ain't cheap. I know. I literally didn't even charge him. I just gave it to him for free. I'm a real one. Mm-hmm. So, the real beauty of straight edge. I'm an influencer, I'm straight edge influencer. <laughs> straight edge influencer. <laughs> Is that even tagline on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a sense of sort of like, um, like you have to sort of like have a watch that has an X on it or something like that, like or a tattoo? Like, why is that something that exists in the community where it's kind of like you want to show off in a little bit, like, this is who I am? It's just sort of. Can- passion about it I would say yeah I think it's a almost of like a yeah I think it's almost like a kind of a, a signal to other people who are like or maybe at a show or something like that just like if you don't know what it is then you'll just be like oh that's a a tattoo of right. a big X for some reason or if you've got like a necklace or something with the little X on it and somebody who knows what it is will look at it and go alright cool mm, right. I don't know what this guy's about so it's like a lot of people just kind of pass it by the equivalent to a secret handshake, but for sure. I was about to say, yeah, it's a bit, a bit like a, a Mason's handshake or something. <laughs> I think it's in the club. Okay, cool. <laughs> I think it's just like with certain people, like depending on like their views. I think that some people see it as like a, a sort of badge of honor. You know what I mean? Especially mm-hmm. depends on, depends on what reasons you have for edge. You know, right. it's like for someone who if they've you know, the whole family of sort of um, substance abusers or struggled with alcohol. It's like, I have this, you know, X on my leg. And yes, it's like a statement of, of straight edge, like an emblem of straight edge. But for them, it's, you know, like a, a living and sort of showing off of what they're going against and yeah. what the, their sort of life stands for. Right. Mm-hmm. But like, like, at the end of the day, it's just like anything else where it's like, you know, some people just want to have that sort of identity, like because it it it's, it does come with that sort of identity where it's like, you know, if you go to a show where it's like a straight edge band's playing, and they're like, you know, they'll do a song, but this one's for the straight edge. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's it's that like oh, uh, as you said yourself, it's like that exclusivity that even though no one wants to be like oh, it's, a, it's like a it's like an exclusive club. Mm. You still can't help but feel that you're sort of part of the club, you know, but it, or turning it on its head where you're part of a club where it's pretty uncool, actually. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, we are the club that don't drink and do drugs and go to bed at a reasonable time, <laughs> you know? So I think it's yeah. just trying to it turn something... Like, yeah, like trying to turn something uncool, cool, by, like, giving you a fancy watch and, you know... Cool clothes, basically. Right. I'd say it is arguably one of the more positive and open-minded for being a somewhat like exclusive image because it is something mm-hmm. that defines you. But for the community, it is incredibly open-minded. Everyone's very positive. Like anyone, everyone I've known who's straight edge, like personally, has never looked down and been like, "Oh, you're not straight edge," and then like defined you for that purpose. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They always thought you do what you want to do, like respect it. But it is like Andy's saying it, you do have that kind of like, that kind of community. So like, like for instance, like the like bands we listen from the Straight Edge Kids, it's like you're part of that. Like, you're you're all in it for the same reasons that people, other people are. Mm. We all hold a lot more meaning to you. But yeah. it is very open and it's very open-minded. And that's, what's the, that's probably the best thing about Straight Edge, in my opinion. The positivity behind everything with it. That's interesting. I'm, just, I'm, glad you I'm taking a, taking a moment to soak that in because it is interesting to think that there's like a is when people go to see a band usually everyone's into that band and that's what they're going to see it but if someone's going to see a straight edge band I guess it's a different layer that a lot of people can't appreciate it's a, a, like a whole sort of like um, there's a community that you not only like this band but you're all like you all believe in the same fundamentals which is quite interesting they're all there for the same reason yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure like hardcore yeah, like there's times where I've been like at, at different countries or different sort of uh, cities for shows. I've not known anything about a band and they've 
you know, the songs that they're playing are just not really my cup of tea. But if they're doing like a straight edge cover or they're playing a song that's like their straight edge song, then you still need to represent. You know what I mean? Where it's like it's the same way where you know um, another big scene like a, a scene that has hardcore and like a, a unique sound is like Japan. That you've got like you say you went over to watch like you know Japanese punk or whatever. And then you had a band there that, you know, had X's in their name or had straight edge. You, you're then, like, a step a step above everyone else in the sense of, oh, you would just not know really what's going on here or know, not know anyone. But because this band is sort of projecting that, oh, we're part of that too, you're therefore, like, mm. oh, well, I'm not as much as an outsider, even though I'm halfway across the world. It's yeah. a bit of a weird example, but... No, I get you, I get you. It is so true, though. Uh, there's been so many times that I've been watching bands and just thinking, I don't like this band, I think this band's pish, in my opinion. Don't know why people are moshing. And then they can just bust out Straight Edge Revenge and you're like, yeah, <laughs> just fucking, <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> you're <laughs> that what you got to represent. You're there for that. Suddenly this band got a whole lot better. <laughs> Are there any uh, people who are straight edge and sort of popular culture that people would know about, like people listening yeah. would know about? Um, CM, CM Punk, punk my yeah. man. <laughs> straight edge warrior. Everybody went for the same example. <laughs> the fucking straight edge warrior. I'm a man. I'm disciplined. I'm CM, CM Punk. That dude came out <laughs> the fucking kill switch and gay and he's got the X's on his fucking hands. You're like, that is the coolest motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. So he's looking at everyone in that crowd and going, listen, her, you don't know a fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom, do you actually know who CM Punk is? I have literally no idea what anyone's talking about. <laughs> 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 right. Oh, CM, yeah. right. So CM Punk is like a, a, was a wrestler on the WWF, now WWE. Right. But his, like, his intro, like his old persona, he was like, you know, like built white guy with like long hair, um, like tattoos, Monster. and like he had... Um, like white hand wrappings that went up his forearm and all his wrappings he just had like huge big black crosses drawn right and it was like it was part of his it was part of his his shtick that it was like oh I'm I'm basically like that that metal core and you metal like background yeah but it's just like infamous his stuff like it's always on straight edge stuff where it's like the camera panning down his thing where it's like before his intro and he's like I'm a man discipline my right. name is CM Punk and as Max said, like comes out like kill switch engage Blair and with all these kids like <laughs> going mental. <laughs> that's that's, like, that's the OG straight edge info. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other like popular uh, artists? <laughs> James Hetfield, do you know him? Nope. <laughs> Metallica, no. I know Metallica, yeah. So yeah, I see so the main guy in Metallica. Right, okay. He's straight edge. So are Metallica considered a, a straight edge band? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not getting this, so... So, like, to be considered, <laughs> if you wanted to be considered a straight edge band, you need to have every member being straight edge. Right. So if he did a solo yeah. career, he's a he's a, a straight edge artist as a solo well, guy. Well, it'd be like, him as a person is straight edge, but, like, to be a straight edge band, it's like, you need to... It needs to be basically like a running theme throughout your music. Right, yeah. okay. You're, you're, pu- you're pushing that. So it's like, yeah. like an easier way to put it is like vegan straight edge, right? So th- that's easier to see than normal straight edge because normal straight edge, you, you can only really talk about you know, like killing drug dealers or whatever. But with vegan straight edge, it's like bands like X Repentance X where every one of their songs or like uh, encompasses like, you know, human greed and exploiting the land and right, the, right. Like, slaughterhouses, blah, blah, blah. So, like, if James Hetfield went off on his own and was like, um, oh, yeah, this one's, like, this one goes out to Budweiser, fuck you, and was like, all his solo career stuff was about, you know, like, intoxication or, like, stuff like that, and yes, he'd be a straight-edge solo part. You know what I mean? Right. That makes sense. I'm getting it now. <laughs> um, I don't know if I don't know if he still is, but I know he was. He's really? Yeah. For years. yeah. He always just talks about how he just doesn't take drugs. Like yeah. everyone else in all future of the time would take drugs, smoke yeah. fucking hell of weed. He did. Um, there was an article. 
there was an article last year that yeah, that, that's what I was looking about to say. Lil Yachty was on some magazine yeah. talking about Straight Edge. Oh, um, interesting. But you know, quite comes attention with those two. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's 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 one of those ones that's a weird sort of weird questions that need to come up. So, like, it's someone needs to basically be asking you. Are you strange? Like, because for most people, like that aren't you know hardcore or punk or you know metal bases, normal journalists aren't going to be going like, "Oh, so you're strange? What's that all about?" Right? You know, yeah, like, yeah. I think most people would be like, "Oh, I'm surprised you know about that." You know, but it's, it, most of the time with them, it's you know it's either something that they claim back in their their day, or they were very vocal about it now. Just as because they're outside of those realms, they still practice it, but they're not really like the same vocal sense. Yeah. Or, um, you know, it's just something that they, they, they pick up, but there's not really, I don't say there's like a, a famous face of it, to be honest, unless it's like back in the day. Um, do you feel like you've learned like a sort of like new level of discipline from being straight edge? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Um, but it's more just the fact that I realise that I don't need to be out of my mind to have fun right mm-hmm. because as Andrew said earlier like throughout your whole kind of life they kind of push this ideology onto you that mm-hmm. you need to be fucking blitz to have the best time of your life or to be normal yeah Whereas, it's just very normalised yeah um, so like not needing that as to like kind of function as a normal human being I'm just like yeah it just kind of shows you how kind of much um, the media and that tries to manipulate how you kind of see the world mm-hmm. right um, this uh, I, I see that veganism and straight edge kind of go hand in hand a lot of the time um, and they can overlap quite often and I feel like a mm-hmm. question that you could ask a, uh, someone that's vegan is if you could make the world go vegan overnight like almost all vegans would say yes they would all want that but is that the same mm. for straight edge does it, like do you kind of like subconsciously want everyone to be straight edge um it's not really something i've thought about it's not really something i care about right. like i'm happy enough to have the friends that i do that are straight edge and i'm happy enough to have the friends that i do that aren't straight edge and um, if anyone wants to know more about it, I'm happy to talk about it. But mm. it's not something I don't think it's as important as veganism. It's still important to an extent for like keeping yourself clean and clear and all that. Yeah. But it's yeah, that's a that's a good question. It's, it's not something true, I've though. actually it's not something I've ever really thought about, so I need to literally have a think it, about that. I think it's something that I've thought about and like it can and going going after Jack, I then sound pretty hardline. But <laughs> um, if the world could go straight edge, it's more so the fact that everyone that you know and everyone that you encounter would be their true self mm-hmm. and they wouldn't have um, the sort of things in life that you encounter where like, you wouldn't have the person that you meet on a Friday night who's like four cans deep and thinks that they're going to batter the next person to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fair. Like, for me, I can't see any positives of anyone. Like, it, it's what Jack, what Jack's saying, I understand and I get fully, like, I wouldn't force it on anyone and I don't go out and preach it. Mm-hmm. But if you're asking me, like, would the world be better off without the use of alcohol and substances, substance abuse, then yes, because yeah. we don't get anything, we don't get anything out of, like, our youth, um, you know, going out to... Um, actively seek these things that like are poison to your body mm. like regardless of how you look at it like there's things that have alcohol percentages that aren't you know like for whatever reason they have a percentage of alcohol that aren't poison but if you're drinking like spirits and things the reason why you get you know dizzy and tipsy is because your body cannot process it mm. and that's why after years and years of drinking it your your body you know starts to shut down your liver starts to shut down so it just can't take it anymore um so basically to to um explaining the reason why the hard line the 
the hard line esque answer is like if everyone could be straight is then yes I would change the world overnight and make it so that people have those problems like there's so many things in, in life that are completely destroyed by drugs like I think in the UK it's, it's not as bad now but like you only need to switch on one documentary about inner city Chicago or anything like that which is just a, a destructive circle where it's just people are born into it they can't escape yeah. and, you know things like inner city violence and drugs so and they can't get any sort of monetary leg up mm. so regardless of regardless of whether you're a selfish person that's looking to just get the better clothes than the person next door to you, or you're a father that's trying to provide for a family of four, like, your only easy option that you have access to is, like, you know, drugs and violence. Mm. And therefore, it just, like, becomes a, a, a bigger circle, and it just keeps repeating on itself. And mm. that all comes down to, like, drugs. But obviously, there's mentalities and there's things that, stem off of that like gangland violence and things but it all centers around drugs and money you know what i mean mm -hmm. so yeah my opinion would be yes and um while jack was talking i just looked up a list of people who were straight edge that i was like oh who would tom know so billy eilish apparently still claims straight edge all right um Christy Mack, the porn star, shout out Christy Mack, apparently she is as well. I don't know how um, I don't know how up to date this is. Um, Anthony Fantano from the Needle Drop is straight edge, I remember that. And um, I think that's about it. But I'll keep you updated if I find any more. Nice, thank um, you. I'm kind okay. of in between both of those. Like, Sorry, you go first, Jack. I was just going to say, can we delete my answer? Because after Andrew's explanation, I'm a bit like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. It's like it's it's, it's too it's two spots. Like I get it to totally. It's not like a case of like oh, but you're just thinking about yourself, and this is a wider thing. Like obviously, yeah. obviously, if the question was asked to you, Jack, like it's not like you're like oh no, I like gangland violence and drugs, but it's more so you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more so like you're you're coming from the the mentality of you're not going to like turn people that aren't willing. But it's more yeah. so that, like, as the ideology of, like, drugs and stuff, then, yeah. But, no, I totally get where you're coming from. And, like, I agree with your answer in that sense. Yeah. But, like, yeah. I'm in between. I got not in between. I more so agree with Andy. But I definitely see where Jack is coming from. Um, I had a whole answer thought out, and now I've just had a massive brain fart and kind of forgot half of what I was going to say. Um, more or less, the situation is, like, I do believe, I'm not trying to say I'm one who likes scamming violence and literally being born into fucking drugs and substance abuse and stuff like that. But I definitely do have a lot of respect for people who can be born into it and use straight edge as an escape to better mm -hmm. themselves. Because that, that is definitely not something that's easy. But I'm also a firm believer that stress does build a lot of character. So yeah. you can always use that stuff as your advantage to better yourself and to create your own personality and your own character to live by. Mm. That's, like I said, not for fucking violence <laughs> and all that shit, but that's the only positive outcome I could see from being a substance abuser and finding straight edge. Yeah, that's a great answer. Um, for anyone that's listening to this, do you have any recommendations of people who are interested to want to know more or want to even just consider going straight edge what were some like tips and tricks or things they can check out um i think it just comes down to like because it is one of those things like literature and and videos are, are a good way of getting it like <laughs> to to not plug but our me mckenzie and jack's very good friend gregor sterling part of his like video um doing his like sort of documentary style he done a, a small documentary on straight edge um, which is called Strange Walk in the Light. Um, but apart from that, there's like loads of um, like information online because that's mostly where it came from. And um, there's there's sort of fanzines and things like that you can get that support grassroots and things like that. But um, I can't really think of any specifics. I don't know, Mackenzie, if you've got or Jack. I was literally going to plug Walk in the Light as well. So. It, de it definitely explains a lot of good parts for it and gives somebody a better understanding if they didn't really know. So, all these amazing stuff like that is a well done little documentary. And you get to see Andrew 
fucking on it again. So I definitely think fanzines. There's a lot of a lot of fanzines. I gave a couple to you, Andy, when I broke edge. I can't remember what they were called though. Yeah, and same. There were sort of from, like that one was from Lauren. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But you will like you will find like different little ones sort of dotted around the internet yeah. and things like that, which is cool. And it, it, as Max said, like the the zines as well sort of encapsulate like your local area so like you probably have zines that are from scotland straight mm. edge that are different from you know japanese or you know us or whatever so it's definitely something just to, to look out for and like well, if you look at it online you will get information you know it's not so much like a, a hidden stick yeah like it's, it's quite it's out there you know what i mean did their friend dan not do one for a very short time. Yeah, he did. Uh, the new yeah. face. Yeah. yeah. So plug plug the new face if you want to sort of check out like hardcore and you know straight edge interviews. That was that ran from about twenty eighteen into twenty nineteen. I don't really know if they're available, but I'm sure you can probably get scans online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just if you're into like kind of heavier alternative music, then go listen to some straight edge bands as well. Mm. <laughs> Um, you can hear the kind of how passionate they are about it because of how aggressive the music is, um, mm. which is something I've always enjoyed about it. Going back to talking about obviously the band Repentance that um, Andrew brought up, there's a few other ones. The big one for me as well was a band called Foundation. Right. Yeah. Um, they're a big straight edge band. There's also um, Inclination. They're a popular one in America at the moment. I'm trying to think what other bands are straight edge. Normally, I could list them off, and they've just all, I've just kind of brain farted <laughs> at this point. I just grew up on a completely different other side of like straight edge. I think because I grew up, I just I think it's because I grew up with that whole punk scene that my dad grew me up on. So I, I immediately yeah. went to like, like Minor Threat were like my favorite bands yeah. growing up, and it was like Minor Threat, Youth Today, Girl Biscuits, like Chain mm-hmm. of Strength, like the one thing that still holds true and all that shit. I've heard yeah. Of and then I got older and realised I just turned into like smelly mosher and just like loving like metal and metalcore and just found like I wanted more, like I wanted more heavy stuff like punk is still good and it has that message but you you do like that you always crave like heavier stuff and, like finding like metal you always got yeah. like went from like throwdown to like eighteen visions and all that kind of shit there's just so many good straight edge bands yeah. and I remember getting to that I can't remember how old I was it was my friend. Going, going through high school, my friend, like, he was the one who just always abused fucking drugs constantly. And he was a big, he's like known as a crust punk. They're, they're, uh, there's no word for it. If you're a crust punk, you're fucking stinking. Like, that is what you are. Like, he, you're you, a crust you, punk. Yeah, <laughs> you'd never, oh, yeah, exactly. You'd never wash, you'd never, like, he was stinking all the time. I remember watching him cracking eggs and using the egg whites to spike his mohawk up. Like, he was a <laughs> master. Aww. But, like, he, he, like, me and him would just sit and listen to like grindcore and noisecore and all that shit. So like, I remember when we, I introduced him to Infest, who were like a really big power violence straight edge band. They have a song called Where's the Unity? I remember him listening to that and just thinking like, that's exactly what it is. Like, where is the unity? Like, you go to these shows and see these all these people fighting. It's like, it's just stupid. Like, we need to just unite as one. That's what straight edge is. It's all the fucking unity, man. Mm. <laughs> Where is the unity, bro? I love how passionate you're getting there. Feeling it. Man, feeling I'm, it. I'm going to claim again, that's it. <laughs> Tom, the, Tom, the last time we came and saw you, I've, I've got a vivid memory. The last time we saw you when we done the podcast, we were waiting for Max Clark to warm up. And we literally <laughs> had throwdown blasting at the top of the <laughs> car was literally shaking as we were screaming. These are my friends. They've got my bag. <laughs> this thing to blood that I have. It's just there's so many. Like yeah, go listen to Throwdown. Like oh, we had forever. We had on. We had forever on. Oh, yeah. I don't know about your blood. We were right into like your house, full volume. I'm surprised like none of your family looked out. Like what the fuck is that noise? I probably used to just noisy, <laughs> loud noises uh, all the time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Shout out. Um, Earth Crisis as well, Firestorm, Iconic, yeah, really cool. Iconic Straight Edge, so, um, awesome. what else, is there? there was one that I had right at the tip of my tongue and I've forgotten, already. oh, Have Heart, Armed With A Mind, 
Another it's strange with Rangers so. because the goal you can't you can't oh, yeah. change Yeah, it's literally in the title, you know what I mean? If you're interested <laughs> in exploring if you're interested in exploring straight edge, put straight edge revenge on, look at the lyrics and then you can decide then if you're like this is cool or these are this is whack. Or just <laughs> kill an addict by hate breed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, if you if you like what you hear in uh, Straight Edge Revenge, go on to Kill an Addict. Or go on to, um, oh fuck, I can't remember it, it's a song by Infest. But um, the lyrics are, living to use, use till you die, life just sucks unless you're high. Can't get high, so you escape with sleep, away from pain, only drugs can treat. Shaking you awake, mindless mutant, do you like what you are? Uncle's abuser, professional retard, it makes me sick, such a waste, just get a gun, both have the same fate. <laughs> as you can see, as you can see, within strays, there are different takes on. on <laughs> it can be very positive, or it can be yeah. Mm. It can be yeah. Different yeah. Times. No, that's but interesting. Think, as we said, it's, it's coming from like a place of yeah. not bearing yourself and not looking down upon people. It's definitely interesting to see like how like certain artists sort of interpret it their way. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Is there anything you want to plug before we before we end this podcast? The straight edge related? <laughs> no, you guys. You plug you guys. Yeah. Oh, right. You've plugged enough um, songs, don't worry. Uh, if you're interested in, in video games and the hear incomprehensible Scottish slang, um, <laughs> you can listen to Northern Entertainment Sound Transmission on Spotify and Apple Podcast and everything. We also have an in- Instagram just called Nest. Um, we've done an episode. Um, yeah, Nest Cast. Sorry, we've done an episode of Volumes. Um, a few. What would that be? Months ago now. Can't even remember. Um, um, what, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but we we sort of talked about our our stuff there. So if you are interested, you can check it out there. Anything else, Jack? I know you're in a band. I want to plug that. Uh, yeah, go follow Revolve Glasgow on Instagram and check out some shite metalcore. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best plug I've ever heard, ever. <laughs> and Mackenzie, uh, Mackenzie want to plug your t-shirts? Mackenzie will plug his stuff, that he should. If Mackenzie uh, won't do it, I'll do it. Check uh, out, uh, 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 <laughs> check out the Volumes weird. podcast with Mackenzie <laughs> where he talks about sick t-shirts and swaggy designs. Yeah. Boom. There I put my stuff on there, so you should just go listen to that podcast and then you can hear my book. Means I'm listening okay. to two episodes, good play. Mm. Exactly. Exactly, getting the counts up, helping the homies out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks again, guys. Thanks for coming on and talking about this. Thanks, thanks for having us. Having us.